Hi, boys and girls, part three, part three of the journey, stories of migration. All right, this one's about the eels, the American silver eels. What an amazing story. Now, eels are the kind of fish that they had on the Little Mermaid. So if you're not familiar with eels, they're really long. Most fish are either freshwater fish. These live in lakes and rivers and ponds or saltwater fish. These live in oceans though, okay? Most saltwater fish will die if they get to freshwater, and most freshwater fish would die if they lived in saltwater fish, saltwater areas. But there is one amazing fish who somehow survives in both kinds of water, and how it moves from saltwater to freshwater and why, it is a very fascinating story. A person seeing an eel swimming in an American river would probably never guess that this fish began its life thousands of miles away in the vast Atlantic Ocean in a mysterious place called the Sargasso Sea. The Sargasso Sea is mysterious because of its seaweed. Gigantic gardens of thick wavy seaweed float in the crystal blue water of the Sargasso Sea. Look amazing, look at that seaweed floating around. And the strange eeriness of the seaweed has for centuries inspired stories of monsters, you know, living in the darkness. But monsters don't actually live in the seaweed of the Sargasso Sea. Only small animal creatures swim there. See the little tiny water in there? Silvers? Still, there are some rather unexpected visitors now and then. They are silver, American silver eels. And they have come all the way from the freshwater rivers of America to the salty Sargasso Sea for one single purpose, to create life. But these eels probably do not feel like visitors here for the Sargasso Sea is where these American eels were actually born. So to them, it's home. Many years ago, these silver eels were very tiny eggs floating gently in the deep seaweed of the Sargasso Sea. Can you see them? They, then they hatched into larvae and they were only a quarter of an inch long and they looked like tiny clear leaves. And where these leaves went next and how is remarkable. The little larvae floated out of the Sargasso Sea and through the vast Atlantic Ocean in only one direction, straight towards America's east coast. Somehow they actually floated the right way. For a year, these tiny creatures traveled with the ocean's current. So the natural movement of the ocean. Love this picture. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. Who would have known seeing them that these were the purpose to their drifting? That one day there would be long, thick eels living in American rivers? Many of the larvae were eaten by fish, but some were not. And these ones reached the America's Atlantic coast. Here the larvae grew and changed and looked more like tiny eels than like leaves. Now they're called glass eels because their bodies were so transparent. They were like see-through. The glass eels swam along the coast for a few months and then they changed again. They grew and became darker and were now yellow eels. And it was as yellow eels that these small fish began to do something incredible. This is amazing. At least the females did. That's even cooler. For a while, the males stayed in the salty water along the coast the female eels turned and swam inland. They came to visit. And they left the salty water that they had lived in for more than a year, and they went in search of fresh water, in search of rivers and lakes inside America. These females were very strong, very determined to find the American rivers where they wanted to live. Some even climbed waterfalls to get there. Waterfalls, wow. The females became freshwater fish then. They continued to grow for nearly 10 years. They lived here for 10 years until they were adults. And now they're about four feet long and were called silver eels. The male eels still living along the coast, like along Florida, the Carolinas, okay, Maryland, Boston. They were small and only one or two feet long. And with an, an and with adulthood and the urge to mate and continue the pattern of life, 
The females in the rivers and the males in the ocean knew where they must all go. <laughs> this is so cool. Ten years or more had passed, so their memories might not be so good, you know. But something in them remembered. They remembered the Sargasso Sea. To the female eels living inside America, somehow they found their way back to the Atlantic Ocean. They traveled up rivers and even when necessary, crossed over land, wriggling their bodies through the wet grass. The eels survived in the grass only because their thick skin does not dry out as quickly as ordinary fish skin. The female and the males all swam away from America out into the vast Atlantic. Incredibly, again, they traveled in exactly the right direction. You can see in their tiny, tiny. Back to the Sargasso Sea. How could they possibly find it? Perhaps they sensed particular smells. Perhaps they rode certain ocean currents or felt electric impulses in the water. Scientists are not sure how the eels navigate. But as most migrating animals miraculously do, the American silver eels did find the dark seaweed of the wide Sargasso Sea. And here, where their lives began, they mated and died. And in a few weeks, there were new little larvae floating in the Sargasso Sea. They looked like miniature leaves. And though they seemed to have no direction, these creatures knew exactly where they were going. The end.